So back in July of 2025, the first time I installed a custom ROM on a phone for this channel was the Galaxy S3 on Lineage OS, and Lineage OS is cool and all, but what other ROMs are out there? Guess there's really only one way to find out. Let's hit up XDA. I paid 500 bucks for this Windows laptop and I can't even game on it because the thing shuts down under any heavy load. Okay, and now let's see XDA Galaxy S3. And while this model is the SGHT 999, uh, well, let's just throw whatever ROM on it because who cares? Yeah, and also the only specific sections on XDA seem to be for this model right here, which we don't have to worry about. So let's just jump right in. All right, let's see what's inside XDA. We got, ooh, <laughs> Lineage OS on Android 14. The one we flashed on the Galaxy S3 was on Android 7. So that would be interesting, but We'll save that for later. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, ooh, CyanogenMod Mod 12.1. Now I use Lineage OS all the time and CyanogenMod Mod is actually connected to Lineage OS. Apparently beforehand, like CyanogenMod, Mod, the project just shut down and then all the people who worked on it moved over to Lineage. I think it'll be neat to take a look at how it differs to Lineage OS though. Oh, you know what? That's right. Uh, did I install TWRP on this thing? Uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's Sid from CyanogenMod, Mod, but I don't know if we get TWRP. Ooh, there it is. All right, so advanced, ADB sideload. Let's fire up command prompt. Okay, then we want to run the ADB sideload for this file right here. Try to ignore my bad command above. Now let's just wait for USB 2.0 to do its thing and take forever. Oh, sideload failed. All right, maybe I should have actually been paying attention to the model number instead of just winging it. Like I said earlier, with the CyanogenMod mod project shutting down and turning into lineage, we got to hit up an archive to find those builds. Maybe it's a good thing it failed because we can use a later version of CyanogenMod mod on this thing. Ooh, there it is. All right, let's do that again. Huh? Oh, I forgot to do dot zip. Are you kidding me? Haven't I done this like 18 times now? Total transfer 0 0.01. Wait, what's up? Can't install this package on top of an incompatible data. Oh, you know what? I didn't wipe the system. Duh. I'm never beating the Alzheimer's allegations. Okay, so I took a sec to wipe everything, reboot the phone. Let's take a look if it works now. Nice, it's actually installing everything now. Looks like it actually worked this time. All right, let's take a look at CyanogenMod. First time seeing this boot animation. Yeah, this background isn't really helping the uh, the obvious burn in this S3 has. And that's all for the setup, and yeah, this is this is the same exact wallpaper as Lineage OS. It's also running a similar version of Android that we had Lineage OS on as well, so yeah, this isn't going to be very fun to play with. Let's download an older version, actually. Okay, so I've been toying with this a bunch off camera, and apparently nothing likes this TWRP version we're using, so instead of using the one made for this phone, we're just going to move to D2 LTE. Or I guess we'll just go with the AT&T option because I'm not seeing D2 LTE over here. This is such a pain in the ass. Next time I'll get an international model. And there we go. It seems like that fixed our issue. Now let's reboot and take a look at the real CyanGen mod. I'm too young to recognize this, but I'm sure a lot of you in the comments do. Now this design is what I think of when I think of the name CyanGen mod. Set up your CyanGen mod account. Oh yeah, that's not working anymore. What I find interesting is the older version of CyanGen mod actually gets my time zone correct out of the box, but Lineage OS doesn't. And now setup's complete. Congratulations, your phone is ready to rumble. More like ramble, am I right? Ha ha ha. And there we are, near stock Android 4.4 CyanGen mod. Let's take a look at the Android version. Yeah, 4.4.4. And we installed a nightly build, not an experimental build, so I'm kind of surprised we have super user right here. Let's keep digging through settings and see how this compares to lineage and themes. Yeah, that's not a thing on lineage. Oh, that's pretty neat. So apparently you can just like mix and match different parts of the Android themes with like styles and you can just import your own ones and maybe just like keep the default icons. What about the notification drawer? Can we make the stock one on Android 4 not suck so much? Quick access ribbon show and drawer. Oh, that, that's so much better. What about the apps pre-installed on CyanogenMod mod though? Uh, what's Apollo? Oh, okay, so it just seems to be like a local MP3 file player. Let's, uh, let's put some music on this thing. USB debugging is enabled by default, and does USB automatically... Yeah, USB automatically just lets your files be available on Windows. That, that wouldn't fly on Android today. Okay, so using ADB, I just pushed the file to the phone, so let's play it. How are you not finding it? Oh, you know, it's probably because I put it in the SD card directory. Oh, okay, so here's our music file. So we'll click on this and we'll use open with and then Apollo and that should play the music fine. I really like how it replaces your wallpaper with the uh, the fantastic album art we got going on here. Next up, what's uh, what's voice dialer? Oh, it's like some uh, like very ancient version of like Google Now or Google Assistant or whatever. Open settings. Wow, okay, thanks, you're completely useless. Terminal emulator. Oh, you know what? Does this just give us like full shell access? And can we run commands as root? Oh, no. What, isn't it like SU instead? 
Ooh, there we go. Okay, so I have a really good idea for a command we should run. Nah, I'm just kidding. I'm not doing that. There's also an app on here called DSP Manager, and this is also very similar to sound effects on Lineage OS, where you can just like customize how the sound comes out of the speakers and headset on your phone. Overall though, these old builds of CyAngine Mod are a really clean way to experience old Android on these phones. Now I do have this screenshot of the home screen I'm going to need for the thumbnail I want to send over to this Nexus 5, so can we just like use Android Beam or something? Ooh, that's pretty cool. And there we go, first time I've actually seen Android Beam working on these devices, and yeah, wow, look look at the screen difference between the two. Let's try out some other custom ROMs, though. Now, I really want to put Android 14 on this thing, but th that's an Exynos model, and we got a Snapdragon one, so that's just not going to work, unfortunately. There's a lot of ROMs there for the international models as well, so let's just filter it with Google search. Ooh, okay, this is a ROM I haven't done in a while, CR Droid. Hey, it's not a 404. I'm going to miss CyAngine mod, but honestly, when I'm done with this video, I might just put it back. And the script succeeded without any issues, so let's reboot and take a look at CR Android. I feel kind of sad now that Sid's missing. No offense to the developers, but this makes my phone feel like some cheap Chinese knockoff. After waiting 20 minutes for this thing to boot, there's actually like no special setup screen, so I guess we'll just like get right into it. There's the audio FX from Lineage OS, but wait, what's recorder? Is this like call recording? Oh, okay, so it's just a memos and screen recorder. <laughs> In America, you actually need to get permission before recording a call, so this was kind of close to breaking the law. All of the rest of the apps seem like they're shared with Lineage OS as well, so I, I really hope there's some cool stuff inside settings. Also, we gotta fix this display. It just looks terrible right now. Okay, there we go. We can also customize the temperature of the display itself over here, and you can just make it completely red if you wanted to. I don't know if this makes it easier on your eyes or worse. Ooh, that's new. Display burn-in protection. It's, uh, it's kind of a bit too late for this device, but I appreciate the effort. And there's also dedicated CR droid settings. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. Adjust brightness by sliding across the status bar. Does this actually work? Oh, it doesn't work until you extend it? Well, you know, then what's the point? May as well just swipe down again and change it. Disable hardware keys for navigation. I mean, what did I expect? This one's pretty convenient though, prevent interaction with navigation buttons while the screen is being used. So if we're just like swiping here, we can't go back, right? Oh, that, that's such a nice quality of life feature. I could see that being especially useful if you gotta swipe down and you accidentally brush over the back button. And inside display, we can customize this even more by changing the transparency levels. All right, so you see how quick settings, how it's like somewhat transparent, but it's, it's not really. If we turn it all the way down to zero, here we go. Now it feels like it's a part of the operating system. You, uh, you may actually want a bit of a blur though. Oh, I swear that wasn't intentional. How about 40? Yeah, okay, that's actually a pretty good blend. And you can also customize every animation on the system to whatever you want, or random if you just want to keep it fun. I don't know about you, but I just find it really fun how every single time you go into a sub menu, it just changes how it flies in. It is kind of slow though, is there uh, any way here to maybe speed them up a bit? Oh, you know what, that's in dev settings. No way, you actually have a fine-tuned scrubber inside of here instead of the 0.5 options on normal Android. I set the animations to 0.35 and aside from the system taking a second, the animations themselves feel really smooth. So that's CR Droid, and we only took a look at the settings and there's so much you can play with. This is really fun. If you're looking for the custom ROM where you can change just pretty much anything about Android, I would go with CR Droid, I I'm impressed. I mean, CyAngine mod is still pretty clean, though. All right, let's wipe this thing and install one more ROM, but first, I want to Android beam the file over. Ooh, this one is actually completely new to me. I've used CR Droid once before, but Validius? I've never even heard of it. This is a custom AOSP ROM with features created in-house and pulled from various other ROMs. Okay, seems fun. Yeah, I think you know the drill by this point. Unknown of system failed, no such volume, and the script ended at .2? Okay, let's just reboot and take a look. Star Wars? Yeah, I don't mean to go all in and like, Ooh, Star Wars, but come on, tell me they don't look the same. Ooh, the logo changed and we went from Star Wars to high school sports team mascot. So I just unlocked the phone for the first time and it's asking me to pick a launcher. First time I've seen that on a custom ROM, I guess we'll, uh, guess we'll just go with the CyAngine mod one. All right, so we got add away, which means we have root on this device, audio FX, some sort of browser, customized settings app, and a themes app. I, I want to take a look at the themes. Oh, okay, it's just the one from CyAngine mod. What's in settings? Oh, and we got a uh, we got a cool overlay over the title. Same as usual until we scroll down and we reach the void. Ooh, that sounds edgy. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like I'm scrolling through a Facebook page. So I was messing around inside the display settings and I actually found a cool new toggle, LCD density. So this actually like helps us zoom out of screen, right? That's actually a pretty cool toggle that wasn't on the other Android ROMs. What's a uh, gesture anywhere? 
Oh, you know what? This is a... Uh, oh, yeah, this is one-handed operation from One UI. Let's see what we can bind the left side to. All right, I guess uh, activities. Ooh, okay, here we go. So we can set up a bunch of different options for this. And then recent activity. What? Oh, I see. We have to draw the gesture. Okay, I guess just out from the side. So yeah, that's actually a pretty cool functionality I haven't seen on Android before. You swipe from the left, you get like this cool sketch pad and you draw what gesture you want the function to do. And the quick settings panel actually has transparency behind it, which I said that in CR Droid, so good taste developers. What is in good taste is the stretched out PNG on the top over here. So Validius has a pretty cool custom ROM with some, uh, you know, less than stellar design decisions. But aside from that, there's actually some pretty cool exclusive features to this ROM, so I, I guess it balances out. I mean, it's exclusive as far as I know. I, I really only use Lineage OS. I think I've had my fill on custom ROMs for the Galaxy S3. Let's put this thing back on TouchWiz and put it back in my collection. Wait, why are you complaining? I'm putting the official software back on you. All right, so we go back into Odin and then we select the file we downloaded and flash it. And Odin crashed. Great, great. I have a feeling that crash was just the S3 interfacing with the computer and screaming, please, please don't put TouchWiz back. And I mean, I would listen, but come on, I like the water effect too much. Yeah, this may look like stock Android, but just give it one second. <laughs> Already with the bloat. Oh no, just let me use the phone, please. All right, here we go, TouchWiz. So anyways, that's me taking a look at CyEngineMod, CR Droid, and... Honestly, I forgot the name. I forgot the name of the third one, whatever that one was. They all had their pros and cons, but honestly, for me, CyEngine Mod is just the coolest. That stock Android skin on this phone, it's, it's just something special, you know? Anyways, thanks for watching it. Let me know down in the comments, uh, what other phones do you want me to do custom ROMs on? Alright, I'll see you later. <laughs>